but I very rarely preach actually on just Psalm 23 uh, ever. Um, sometimes it's just so familiar that that uh, people. Um, sometimes when something's over familiar to somebody, they don't get anything out of it actually, and uh, so. But just uh, just a diff- little different way of thinking about it. I think tonight we'll go into. I want to talk about varying places, varying places. I think this message, when you're, as you get older, probably 30, 40, 50, every, every decade, probably this is a sermon that will be more important to you tonight. Um, when you're young, I don't think you uh, maybe will value this truth maybe as much as you do as you get older. Uh, Psalm 23, and let's start at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever." Let's pray. Father, I pray that your spirit would speak to us tonight, Lord. I pray that we would uh, understand this way of thinking that maybe isn't quite the natural way of thinking. I pray we'd see things maybe a little differently tonight, and your spirit would teach us, Lord, and prepare us for, uh, for this. And uh, may we get truth, and may we get wisdom, may we get uh, uh, the knowledge of the Holy One, Father. And we just, we just know that we don't... Uh, know everything, and our minds need renewed in this uh, secularized world, and we need uh, the mind of Christ, and we need to see how you think of us, Lord. And I pray tonight you'd help us and, and really transform our thinking and bless us with this, uh, with the truth of this passage, Lord. May, though we have it memorized, maybe we would still get uh, something from it. So we just ask your spirit to do all that work and you to do something great in Jesus' name. Amen. See many places you go to and uh, as you see the shepherd in this passage, um, we see the, the shepherd leading in many places. And uh, we see, first of all, green pastures. He says in verse 2, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. We see another place, he's, uh, He leadeth me beside the still water. Um, we see another place, He leadeth me, verse 3, in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. So He's leading me in those paths. Those are all good paths. And all beautiful paths and uh, great places, but they're different. And uh, but in all three, that's where the Lord is taking. In some spots you're moving, in some spots you're sitting still here, and they're all different. And uh, and we see that. Then we see spots that aren't so pretty and, and scenic. Verse four: Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For that's a that's a different kind of spot than the still waters. It's a lot different spot. He, he, he leads me in that spot too. He takes me there. I'm not going to be afraid, but he's with me there, but, but that's where he might lead me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And now, now you're sitting down and God's setting you up to eat in the middle of your enemies. That's a lot different than besides still waters. <laughs> These are all different places. But... If I'm seeing it right, God, the shepherd, is taking you to every one of those places. Okay? God, the shepherd, is taking you to every one of those places. And God is leading you to those places. I think that, that that's the key to the message tonight, is understanding that these, I, the Lord's my shepherd. I'll be fine. He might take me here or here or here or even over here, which I don't really like here as much. It's not exactly, you're not going to find a, a vacation brochure for the Valley of the Shadow of Death. Come, visit the Valley of the Shadow of Death. Um, that's not where you're going to end up wanting to go. Uh, free one-way ticket. Um, but, uh, um, but that's not, that's, that is part of where he takes you. Can you imagine a table, and you're sitting at a table, let's put a table down here, and all of a sudden, all the people who hate you and want to kill you are sitting at the table with you, and God says, here, here's your food. Sit down and eat with them. But they got forks and knives. Matter of fact, if you can use anything, use a knife. The fork takes too long. And, and, and so you're saying, but they're, they're, 
Those are my enemies, and you're making me eat with them. You know what it says there? Thou preparest me a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. I don't know if they're sitting at the table. I don't know if they're standing behind you. I'd much rather them be sitting across from me. But that's where God prepares the table. Right? Am I seeing that right? Okay. Um, but uh, am I right there? Is, is God preparing the table in the midst of the enemies? Amen? So God is taking us all those places. God takes us there. There's a whole spectrum of life where God takes you. I think we think, okay, if I'm serving God and I'm doing the thing that's right, I'm beside the still waters, the path of righteousness, and the green pastures because I'm doing right. And then if I'm in the valley of the shadow of death and eating in the middle of my enemies, I must be doing something wrong. But there's variable places in the will of God. There, there are places where God takes you in the life's journey. And all of them are not besides still waters. It's not been my experience. Uh, as I've served the Lord these 29 years, I've served the Lord and, 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 and stayed in His plan and been where God wants me to be for the most part. And you know what? I've been in some pretty, the valleys of the shadow of death. And he might be even talking literally when you're about to die there. You got to be with you and, and, and take care of you there. But it's, it's, it's all like that. Just got a few thoughts about the varying places. Number one, it's about the person, not the place. It's about the person, not the place. Verse one, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's the foundation of the whole passage. He leads me here, he leads me there. He, I'm in the middle of my enemy. He's not worried about it because the Lord is with me. His rod and his staff comforts me. If you look at the whole chapter, everything in the chapter is saying this might happen, but God. This might happen, but God. I might be here, but God led me there. I might be here, but God is with me. The whole emphasis is on everything's okay. The place doesn't matter. It's that God's with me. That God led me there. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. All these things are emphasis on him. He's the one leading me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, though I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. The emphasis is on God here. The places are just where you end up. But it's, I'm just, I'm fine. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm not going to want if I'm in the middle of mine enemies or if I'm in the valley of the shadow of death or if I'm beside still waters. All of those things, I am following. I'm the sheep and the Lord's my shepherd and he leads me here, so I'm fine. I was in just as, just as safe of hands when everything was going terribly wrong when I started the church, as I'm in safe hands right now. Open doors just as secure right now as it was a year ago when we had a secure building situation. Amen. Okay? Because the Lord's our shepherd. And if the building and thing all doesn't work right and, and falls apart and everything else, the Lord is still leading us. Amen. And so we're, we don't need to sit here and worry because the Lord's our shepherd. And your life... If you think, if we have an idealism of how our life's going to turn out. You know, very few people in their idealism have a, have a bad life turning out for themselves. Everybody's got pretty much a great life plan out for themselves. <laughs> but you know, life has detours. You ever need to get somewhere and the road construction is right where you don't need it to be? I had that today. And I had to reroute and try to figure out how to get back around to where I was going. And the place is temporarily closed, of course, after all the trouble. And, uh, and, and that's life. Life changes. Life varies. You thought it was going to be like this. You thought you are going on vacation and you end up in the valley of the shadow of death. And, and so it's about the person. It's about the Lord. And you don't worry too much. And there's an emphasis on God in here. David danced before the ark in celebration when everything was great, and he wept when no man cared for his soul. That's who wrote the psalm. David had some real high points, great times, great victories, and he watched an angel slaughtering tens of thousands of his people. 
David sat in a cave saying, no man cares for my soul. And David celebrated as the ark of God came back. That's David knew. David killed Goliath and the whole nation was singing songs about him. And David came back to Ziklag and his family was kidnapped and everybody wanted to kill him. <laughs> Your life ever have that? Sometimes a day is like that. You ever a day that starts off great and turns into a nightmare or vice versa? Listen, uh, uh, but the Lord is your shepherd. David had been through ups and downs and highs and lows and everything else. He says, you know what, but the Lord's my shepherd. I'll be okay. The places vary. The situations vary. You should not be much more worried when you have enemies than when you have no enemies you know of. You're standing there celebrating because nobody hates you and everybody loves you and nobody's after you. And then a rock falls off of uh, uh, the side of a, of, a, of, a, of a mountain and knocks you on the head. Or somebody crosses the lane. Or something else happens you didn't know. Why do you think that... Listen, I am no more safe standing right here right now than I've been in some of the most dangerous areas in the world. God can take care of me. I can have a meteor coming at me right now. We all could, because I don't want to go alone. And uh, but but uh, um, but but you know, it's ultimately the Lord that's leading you. And just chill out. What's the Bible said that? Chill out thereof. And, and, and because people are so are so stressed. But the Lord, the Lord, just relax. Listen, some, your enemy can come against you. The Bible says they stumbled and fell when it came to get you. God can give your enemy a heart attack before they get to you. Okay, God can put an angel there. A million things can happen. Just relax. Just relax. The Lord is your shepherd. His presence is more important than the situation. Let's turn to Isaiah 40. His presence is more important. His presence is more important than the situation. Isaiah 40. In verse 28, hast thou known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the, the Lord, the creator of the universe, uh, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, and there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no mighty increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and be not, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And then just a, a little bit forward there in chapter 41 and verse 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and I have not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. See, God says it's about me, not about the place, not about where your life is right now, not about your age and your, your, your financial and your career and everything else. It's about letting me lead you. If I lead you, it'll be okay. I'm a good shepherd. If the sheep wanders away from the shepherd, they're in great danger. See, it's a trust. Well, let me, number two, it's a picture of the shepherd and the sheep. It's a picture of the shepherd and the sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. There's a lot about the shepherd and the sheep in the Bible. It's all over. Uh, John chapter 10. Let me just briefly turn there and read that. We, we were in this Sunday a little bit. John chapter 10 about the shepherd and the sheep. He's a good shepherd. He cares about his sheep. He, wants, he emphasized that in many ways in John 10. He says a forward and backward and every different direction just to know that we're safe in his hands. Uh, John 2, 10, or 10, 10 2, uh, 2, it says, uh, John chapter 10, verse 2, and he entereth into the door, uh, by the entering it by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And he putteth forth his own sheep, and he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. If the shepherd's before you, he's preparing the way. 
A str- and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from, from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. That This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not the things which are spoken unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not for to steal, and to kill, and destroy. I am come that they might have life and might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for a sheep. Verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and follow me. He knows us by name, it says. Verse 3. He's willing to give his life for the sheep. Verse 11. So we see that. It's about being sheep for the shepherd. It's about trusting him to lead us. No wonder there's so many verses about the security that we have in him. Because you're trusting the shepherd to take care of you. Let's go, uh, since we're in John 10, let's go to John 14. Watch how him being with you just takes care of everything in God's mind. You don't have to worry about anything. John <clears throat> chapter 14, verse 16, I'll pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth in the world cannot receive, because it seeth him, not neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. And yet a little while in the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. I am going to take care of you, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. And the great security of that. And all the verses in the Bible, how safe the sheep are. Um, back, back in Matthew 6, it keeps on saying, do not worry. Your father knows you have need of these things. All the way, verse 25 through 33. You seek my kingdom first. You be a good follower. And the shepherd will take care of you. The Lord, the shepherd is going to be with me. His staff is there to take care of me. And his staff sometimes comforts me. The staff was used for a couple of things, but when it had a hook on the end, it could grab a sheep and pull it back in line, or it can whack a, a wolf. And the Lord is our shepherd, and his rod and staff, his great power and his great strength, comfort me in the middle of mine enemies. And in the middle of your worries of life, you have the almighty God of the universe that can take care of you, that can protect you. He's your shepherd. It's the shepherd's job to protect the sheep. Not the sheep's dog. Job. I say dog. Or the sheep dog. And uh, it, is, it is the shepherd's... I mean, sheep never say... Uh, that's not what sheep do. Okay? I'm going to rub my wool against you until you bleed. Uh, that's not what, what a sheep does. Sheep, they're dependent creatures. They need a shepherd. They have no natural defense. They're not fast. They're not smart, they're not clever, they're not camouflaged, unless it's snowing. Um, they, are, they are not very capable of taking care of themselves. God designed sheep to follow a shepherd, just like you. Now, we humans think we're awesome and we're, we can handle everything, we've got everything all figured out until our plans don't work like they had it written up. You don't know anything. None of us do. We are way overconfident. You don't know how your heart's going to beat. You don't know how your the traffic's going to be. You don't know how somebody's response is going to be. You don't know how your family's health's going to be. You need to let the shepherd lead your life because the best laid plans of mice and men fall to pieces. Let the Lord be your leader. Let's still go back to Psalms again. When you do that, you're pretty secure. Uh, let's see, just a few Psalms. I don't want to do too many here. Psalm 3. <clears throat> So here's a person in bad places, but that the Lord is with him, it's enough because he's a shepherd and the sheep trust a shepherd to take care of them. Verse one, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of mine head. It's God. I cried in the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill. I laid me down and slept. I wait for the Lord to sustain me. I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people that have set themselves against me. It's the, if, the Lord's, if the Lord's with me, I'm not stressed out. I'm not too worried about it. Psalm 27. So places vary. If you're waiting to get to your place in life where everything's secure and now you can relax, 
You're still waiting for that, huh? You haven't caught on yet? <laughs> you keep waiting for that place. And if you get there, enjoy it really quickly. Just don't, don't trust in everything being all worked out. Just, just relax. Trust your shepherd. Don't be a sheep. What are we going to do? Well, why are we here? Shepherd's got it under control. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me in this, will I be confident. One thing have I desire to the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. I'll be all right. It's in the Hebrew. I'll be all right. And, uh, and, and it'll be fine. I laugh. I told the story before when I was in Haiti, and it was my first year there, and we were, we were way out in, in the middle of nowhere, and that was where the voodoo was pretty strong. And, and uh, we were in a house, and I was, uh, I was sleeping, and, and we were in the middle of, uh, it, it, we were in a, in a house, and it was a pretty primitive house, and I had three guys with me, and uh, they were a translator, a, a driver, and a and uh, a pastor, and uh, and then across the street from me, I had my bodyguards, uh, which were uh, uh, three basic hoodlums, and uh, one of them I just happened to know from here, who was in Haiti uh, with a with a Haitian man, and they had guns, and they were tough guys, and anyway, they were they were there to make sure I was okay because they knew me in the states, and so one of them did, and so. Anyway, in the middle of the night, I'm, I'm sleeping. It's three in the morning. And I hear, all of a sudden, I hear this marching on the street. Coming down the street. And I hear this chanting. Saying all this stuff. And it's, I don't know what time. I hear it coming way down the street. And I'm laying on this. It is, I thought, what in the world is it? What is this? This is not a mattress. I finally lift it up. And they were, this is the best they have. It all it was is a bunch of clothes. They put a whole bunch of clothes on top of like a table and then put a sheet over it. And that was my bed. That was the best bed in the house. And, uh, and so I was sleeping just fine and, and crashed. And, and I, I lift my head and said, I wonder what they're doing out there. Three in the morning and uh, marching down the street. Probably 60 voices going down the street, marching military style. And uh, I lift my head and they go by the house. And off down the street they go. I lift my head back down, go to sleep. I'm perfectly fine. Everybody else I found out the next morning's hair was standing straight up. And that was an army of voodoo guys. And they thought they were looking for me. I was the only white person within 50 miles probably. And, uh, and, and, only, and, and everybody knew who I was. And they were scared to death. Everybody was. They said, did you hear that last night? I said, yeah, what was that? They said, it was voodoo guys. I couldn't sleep the rest of the night. They were all scared. They said, weren't you scared? I said, no, I won't rub sleep, man. <laughs> if I'd have known it was voodoo guys... I would have been worried anyway. I don't worry much. Uh, the Lord, the Lord can listen. The Lord's more powerful than voodoo guys. Amen. Just relax. The Lord's your shepherd. He had me out there. I'm all right. Just trust the Lord. Next, we said number one, it's about the person, not the place. Number two, the picture is a shepherd and the sheep. Number three, he's doing different things in different phases of life. Psalm 23. He's doing different different things in phases in life. Just notice the, the wording here. Verse 2, lying down. There's times in life where he makes me to lie down. <laughs> Goers hate the lying down times. You ever need a solution, need to make a decision, and God says, nah, you're not going to figure it out yet. Relax. <laughs> lie down. <laughs> he makes me to lie down. There are phases in your life where it's wait. They wait upon the Lord, show me their strength. But I want them to get sick. Wait. But I need to do something. No. Lie down. Rest. And the shepherd says, rest, you rest. That's different phases of life. There's times of life when you need to just lay down beside the still water, have some peace for a while, just chill out, realize God's got it under control. There's nothing you can do right now. That's not easy, is it? Lie. He makes you to do it. That's a phase of life. That's sometimes in life where you get to say, the shepherd told me to lie down. I like the prettier field over there. See, I read a, a great, great book. If you ever want to read a good book about, about shepherd and sheep, there's a great book. It's about a man named Philip Keller. I think the book is called uh, 
A Shepherd's View of Psalm 23. Great book. And he grew up in Kenya as a shepherd. And, 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 and he talks about one of the things, he said, you could have a fence and one side of the field has a, a, a one a flock of sheep and the other side of the fence has another flock of sheep. It's the same grass. But one group of sheep is healthy and looks good and is taken care of. And the other ones are scraggly. And, uh, and sick and don't look good and they're all messed up. And everybody judges the shepherd by how the sheep are doing. And that's the whole thing is the Lord is my shepherd. So surely goodness and mercy will fall on me all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He has a judgment of his shepherd. And he says how, how, how good a shepherd it is. You can have the same grass same field, just a, a, a fence between them, and one has sickly sheep and one has healthy sheep because some of them take care of their sheep, move them around and take care of them, make sure they're okay and protect them and, and take care of the disease and all that stuff. And the other ones just let the sheep go. Your shepherd leads you. Your shepherd comforts you. Your shepherd, you say, awesome, but he also, sometimes he leads you, he leads you next to your enemies to eat. Can I get a steak knife for this? Uh, because that's where your shepherd leads you. You say, I, I, want a, I want a shepherd that leads me beside the still waters. Yeah, but the shepherd who might keep you there all the time might be sleeping while the wolf's carrying you away. Your shepherd takes you in different places. Sometimes he's leading you. We see in verse 3. Sometimes you're lying down. Sometimes you're walking along beside the still waters. You're walking along. But that's a peaceful place. He's leading you in peaceful paths for a while. He's restoring your soul at certain times. Sometimes you're in dangerous place, but he's putting his rod on you and his staff to comfort you. Sometimes he's feeding you in the presence of your enemies, but that's all part of his plan. Your shepherd's doing different things in different phases of life. As you get older, you realize you're in a different phase of life or a different situation in life. Uh, and when you're in school, you need certain the Lord to be certain things to you. And as you're a young uh, adult going into life and making decisions about marriage and career and all these things, you need God to be something else for you. See, the Lord is your shepherd, and, he, and there's different phases and parts of life and times of life. But you don't change that much. You don't worry that much because your shepherd leads you to each place in life, good or bad, hospital or carnival. The Lord is your shepherd, and he leads you there. We have different phases. He makes you lie down, be rest and quiet, strengthens you. Restores your soul. He leads you beside the still waters. His touch and his power comfort you. He makes you live in troubles and danger sometimes. That's what he does. Number four, there is, uh, uh, <clears throat> there is a great peace and assurance of eternal life. In verse six, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Doesn't matter where I'm going to be, I'm going to be in heaven. That's because the Lord's my shepherd. Because he is that. Number four. Number five, er, uh, it will be a blessed journey either way. Now, I want you to notice, though, he might be beside still water sometimes, and sometimes the valley of the shadow of death, sometimes eating in the presence of his enemy, why would they lead sheep in the middle of the wolves and lions and bears? <laughs> I don't know. Shepherds smarter than sheep. Sheep are dumb. Older I get, the more I learn. The more I know, the less I know. I used to know everything. Not anymore. I just learned. All right, God. That's, mm, that's a strange place to eat. That's a strange, that's an interesting value you're taking me to. That doesn't, mm, mm, look at that. The shadow of death. That's a nice skull going, the sun's going behind. But God, but you know what? You just learn to say, he's the shepherd. He's put me here. I'm going to rest and not worry. I'll not worry if in a camp and host against me. Watch how secure he is and how good it's going to be in life because the Lord is shepherd. Verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down here, lie down there, restores my soul, does all that. Valley of the shadow of death, verse 4. Verse 5, prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. That's healing. That's care. My cup runneth over. Sounds like it's pretty happy. 
My cup's over full. It's a good place. But if you say, no, no, I don't ever want the shadow of death. I, I, I'm serving the Lord and I shouldn't be in the shadow of death. My enemies shouldn't be all around me. It should be easy and good. No, it is good. It's just not always easy. It's different phases. But in that, he's over you in his life and said, my cup runs over. In the valley of shadow of death, his rod keeps touching me and say, hey, if anything comes, I'm whacking him. It's okay. Relax. Eat. But, 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 but. I prepared your food right there. Eat. Look, I got good food in the table. It's easier for men. Men don't even know what's going on around them when they're eating. And uh, now prepare us a table in the presence of mine enemies. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. It's not like he's a person who thinks it's going to be terrible. No, because that's good. It's a great life. Hey, if he takes me there, he's got to protect me there. <laughs> if he's put me there, he's got to take care of me there. I'm in the valley with the shepherd who can kill any animal that comes. So if he can just rest, and when things don't go right, when things aren't as planned, when things are harder, when things are chaotic, when, when your plans have been destroyed, when you're following your shepherd, you say, hey, you know what? Everything's going to be fine. Truly goodness and, fall, well, and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I am the good shepherd. I come that you might have life. You might have it more abundantly. He's for you. He knows you have need of these things. And so realize there's different phases, not good God, bad God. Amen. It's just different. You're just in the valley right now. But God's with you and he'll touch you with the staff. Everyone smells reach out, the rod and the staff come for you. Any shepherds come, any sheep come, any, any animals, any wolves, any bear, it doesn't matter what comes. It's okay. You're in the, you're in the valley. You're eating next to your enemies. I know that I put you there to eat with them. They won't touch you. Eat. Enjoy your food. Your cup's running over. Drink it. Enjoy it. You'll be all right. God's big. Let him be your shepherd instead of you trying to run all the time to the green pasture and get eaten by the wolves because you're not with your shepherd anymore because he was leading you to the table with your enemies. But everywhere he leads is fine. It's just different phases. So realize it's the person, not the face, that secures you in life. When peace like a river attends my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say it is well with my soul. So what happens? Open door. Pastor, what's going to happen? With the... <laughs> we got a plan. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But you're going, you're going to go from one building to another to another and don't even know when you're going to move. And what are you going to buy tracks this week? Uh, I don't know. Hard to give out a track when you're going to be there one more week. But we give them to on Saturday. We're going to be there one more day. <laughs> you know what? God's moving us. And he's moving us and he's putting us in that building over there on 240th for three months, maybe, or maybe more, maybe less. Relax. It'd be fun. It'd be an adventure. It'd be fun. You can sit there and enjoy your food and just talk to your enemies. Hey, man, good meal, huh? Too bad you can't do anything to me. Shepherd's right there. I'm going to take a bite of your food, too. Mm -mm. And because your shepherd's going to take care of you, eat their ice cream. Do all the stuff you shouldn't do because the shepherd puts you there and enjoy life. <laughs> I'm not going to want. I'm going to have goodness and mercy that will follow all the way to life. But sometimes I'll be in the valley of the shadow of death. And sometimes I'll be in the middle of my enemies. But goodness and mercy will be with me forever. God's, God's with me. I'm all right. That's the shepherd. I'm just a sheep and he told me to go here. He's protecting me. He'll, he'll take in when it's rest time. He'll rest me.